Hey, so have you ever heard a new song on the radio that uses part of an old favorite? That's called sampling, where an artist uses a riff of an old song to tug at your heartstrings because it sounds cool. But seriously, isn't it interesting how music is the key to so many memories? Musicologist Nate Sloan and songwriter Charlie Harding, host of the podcast Switched on Pop, join us to talk about why music can be so nostalgic. Well, I think this is such an important topic because it's something that affects every single person. You can be anywhere and you hear a song and you're brought right back to that moment when it meant something to you. That's what I think is important about nostalgia and music. But why do you think people are drawn to music and sounds that make them feel nostalgic? I think... I think it's part of the formula of pop music that there's always something that's familiar to people, something that you can uh, lock into and think, oh, I, I know this, I recognize this. But then there's always that's combined with a dash of something new and kind of radical. And so that combination of the old and the new, that's what makes pop music tick. Yeah. Um from an artist's perspective, I'd say, why do you think artists are drawn to bringing back sounds of the past? Everyone's always adding a riff from their own songs. Um, I know that, is it Dua Lipa who's done Rocket Man now? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Cold Heart with Elton John. I mean, why do we love that so much? I think a lot of it is in contemporary relationships to musical pop stars. If you want to see their most authentic self who want to know what they most love mm -hmm. and a lot of that is going back to what they listened to when they were growing up could even be things that they heard when they were in elementary school middle school i think of a song like 1999 by charlie xcx and troy savon it's a song which is nostalgic for 1999 which for me is like i doesn't feel that long ago like we're literally referencing britney spears who still has a career today but the musical tastes were really different then and they were doing sort of a new jack swing kind of vibe and so 1999 plays off of that feel and i think people connect to it because they're like charlie xcx i get you because that's how i felt when i was that young <laughs> For real, absolutely. Um, you mentioned that, we mentioned Dua Lipa. What are some other kind of sounds and music that have been coming back into rotation recently? I, by the way, Foo Fighters doing the Bee Gees. I am here for it. Yes, and that's a great example because I think when we listen to the pop charts, we hear the 70s and the 80s having a big moment right now. If you listen to one of the biggest hits of the last few years, The weekend's Blinding Lights, you hear all sorts of references to 80s music. You mm -hmm. hear synthesizers, you hear programmed drum beats. If you compare Blinding Lights to a song like Aha's Take On Me, you're going to hear- That's what I thought when I heard it. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities there. So I think the, the 80s and the late 70s, those decades are really having a moment right now. Yeah. And I'm glad because it does really get you going. And it, I, you know, for me, I feel like it kind of merges all the generations together. And I like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like a record like Silk Sonic's An Evening with Silk, An Evening with Silk Sonic, which is Anderson Pock and Bruno Mars, is exactly that. They literally bring on P Funk's Bootsy Collins to introduce the record. It feels like an album that you could listen to on your own, whether you're a Gen Z or you're a boomer, you're gonna vibe with that record. <laughs> I'm writing it down because I'm definitely listening to that on the way home. So one. on that note, it isn't, it's not uncommon for artists to sample old songs and give their own take on it. Can you talk about the difference between those two methods and how artists do it well and any kind of favorite examples you might have? Sure, yeah. Maybe I can break down sampling and then Charlie can talk about interpolation. Yeah. Sampling is when uh, an artist uses the recording of an earlier artist in, in their track. So they're, you're literally sampling the sounds of an earlier recording and putting it into your music. So a good example might be one of our favorite songs from last year, Twerculator by City Girls. This fantastic hip hop track uses a sample from Africa Bombada's Planet Rock, a hip hop classic. And that's the drum beat of the song is this sample. And you can hear the original in the background. So that's a little different from interpolation, which I, Charlie, Charlie can break down. Okay. Interpolation is when you borrow a part of the idea, you aren't using the actual original recording, but you might be playing some sort of twist on the original. Two really fun examples that happened this year would be like, 
Drake's way too sexy, which takes right said Fred's I'm too sexy and puts a whole new spin on it. One that is a little bit more clandestine, if you will, is Kiss Me More by um, SZA and um, Doja Cat. Doja Cat. Thank you, Nate. And it's actually using the exact same melody as Olivia Newton-John's physical entering into the chorus. And so part of that like little moment is reminding us of this thing, maybe subconsciously, Mm-hmm. in a way that gets us vibing with the track. So that's an interpolation. Yeah, that's I, I just fascinating to me. All right, so from the fascination to the fun. Mm-hmm. What are your favorite, because I've already written down a bunch right here, but I want to know some <laughs> of your favorite songs, artists, albums right now um, that you turn to when you're feeling mm-hmm. nostalgic. I mean, I think I can speak for both Charlie and myself. We have been listening to the Beatles' final album, Let It Be, because we've been watching the documentary yeah. about the making of that that's just been released. And I think it's uh, released kind of a flood of memories and emotions because we both grew up listening to the Beatles. What about you, Charlie? Are you, is, is the Beatles? I mean, it's definitely the Beatles for sure. There's been a lot of that in my household recently. Um, it's also because it's the holiday season. I think there's no season more nostalgic than the holidays. Mm-hmm. And so obviously spending a lot of stuff my family is very into the um charlie brown christmas album which is just oh, a, a, okay. literally every year uh at the beginning of the holiday seasons and I, I i say to nate it's almost like a pavlovian response it's like i hear vince garaldi trio and it's like it's holiday time <laughs> i love it charlie brand and the john denver muppets album oh all right all right 